people definitely stare, but you grow up to ignore it. Should I like go like this? I've learnt more through the net about my own disability in recent years than I'd ever known before. I think you really go through the three stages of where you're angry and then you try and hide away so people can't stare and then you just realise what's the point in hiding and you just, just go back out into the natural world. What colour? They're all different ages and live in different cities and towns but they share an unusual condition known as arthrogroposis. I remember when I first heard the word arthrogropesis, I didn't think I would ever be able to say it. <laughs> it was like this monstrous, this little wee boy and this monstrous word. Families always worry about their kids, especially when there's an unfamiliar condition that's hard to find information about. Even doctors aren't sure why some babies are born with the characteristic hook joints. It's a condition I'd never heard of, yet there are around 40 New Zealanders living with it. Wendy Nielsen's arthrogryposis has improved as she's aged. So has her confidence. Now 62, she's a lecturer, a disability advocate, and a recipient of the New Zealand Order of Merit. She offers words of wisdom. When I reflect on my own life, nothing stopped me. Um, I've always gone for everything, and like driving the car, like um, becoming a parent, any of those things that just like everyone else. When I was born, um, I was up the East Coast and it was Tapuya Hospital. And my mum went in there because remember this was a few years back now. And she had her baby and the baby was taken away from her, me. And dad was rung up at about three o'clock in the morning. Mr Phillips, Mr Phillips, would you please come Early, as soon as you can, we want to talk to you. And Mum did not see me for three days because they wouldn't allow her to see me because my hands were really twisted in. Then what they said, you know, send her up to Wilson home, give yourself a life. And they said, no, definitely not. A lot of um, my colleagues in the disability sector can recall that they were in institutions. I'm very pleased that I didn't have to go through there. Who are you? Two-year-old Lily was born into a new era, but even her maternity team misdiagnosed her twisted limbs. No. Only one in every 3,000 babies are born like Lily. What are you trying to do? Ah, <coughs> oh, there you go. Her young mum was daunted by raising a child with an unusual condition. So Lily was handed over to her grandmother, Cherie. Uh, she came to me when my son and his girlfriend uh, were struggling to look after her. So, um, yeah, she's been in my care since she was about eight months old. She's raised five kids of her own and was ready to retire. She was even saving for a cruise. Now she's committed to maximising Lily's physical function. Even though she cries, and I hate it when she cries, without the physio, she'll lose all use of her arms and she'll lose all movement in her legs that she does have. Lily needs painful physiotherapy twice a day. It's tough on both of them. She has her legs up all the time, so these muscles have shortened. So that's about as far as the... We need to stretch these legs so she can... I know, darling, so she can put her legs on the floor. I know it hurts. I know, sweetheart. Oh, go on. There we go. Here we go. All better. With my own children, I never had to do any of this kind of stuff, and then suddenly you're dealing with a child who can't feed themselves and then can't dress themselves, and at two years old, she should be able to put her clothes on and walk around and do stuff, but having to change an entire house to suit that thing, um, it's been a big uh, learning curve for sure. So unusual is her condition that her midwife didn't pick it up when she was born. In fact, they said her limbs would straighten out in two weeks. Cherie sensed Lily had something more seriously wrong. Um, they were told when Lily was first born that there was nothing wrong with her, so nothing was ever done about it until uh, her three-month checkup when she was taken to a doctor, and that's when they found out there was something seriously wrong with her. It just seems like it would have been so obvious. It was very obvious to 
to look at her and see that she wasn't normal. Her legs weren't down. She wasn't behaving like a normal child. By the time Lily was diagnosed with arthrogryposis, it was too late for initial operations to straighten her arms and legs. She's learning to do things her own way. I tried to teach her how to crawl and she found out her own way, which was nothing like I was trying to teach her. And uh, same with the wheelchair. When she first got the wheelchair, I popped her in it and she just totally refused to, to use it. So I let her scream for a while. And then I placed lollies around the house on different objects. And if she wanted the lollies, she had to physically push herself to get there. And now she's a wizard. Children with arthrogryposis simply adapt or invent a way to get by day to day. Their parents learn kids need to figure it out for themselves. My parents used to help me up the steps going to school and once I said I want to go by myself and my mum knew that that was going to be a challenge for me and she and dad had a big discussion, OK, let Wendy do it. And um, they sort of dropped me off and mum sat in the car feeling quite upset, wondering how I was going to cope. And I climbed up the steps, crawled up the steps and um, waved, waved goodbye just doing it my way. This is Max. Yes. Eight and energetic. For my dancing monkey, he's getting bored. Just look at him. Look at him. He lives in Wanganui and goes to his local school. Well, he's pretty outgoing, uh, our Max. He's, he loves to um, create a bit of a buzz, run around like a madman. Max has been fortunate to have a mum, doctors and physiotherapists armed with information about arthrogryposis. Well, there's about 150 different types of arthrogryposis. Some of it's genetic, some of it's um, sporadic, like his is, and some of it's facial, some types. Um, his is a non-genetic type. It's just, they're not quite sure of the reason why, he, why it happened, but something happened in utero, either a vascular compromise, lack of space sometimes, some, sometimes can be a cause. And the good thing about his type is that when he's born, it's the worst it is. It can only get better from there. So it's not progressive and um, his joints all start to loosen up. Um, yeah, so it's just a matter of working on it from birth. Put up your hand, please, or your foot. We've filmed multiple stories do. with Max over four Five. years. We captured his first year at school. Five camera and documented surgery that brought his twisted arms in front of his body. Surgery aims to improve mobility and function. But how much do you put a kid through? Max's parents struggled with that when Max was offered surgery on his arms. We've gone from no, let's not do it, let's have it, let's not mm. do it. And, and we, we thought we could wait till Max was of an, of an age that he could help us make that decision. But we, we kind of thought that it can't be any worse like if we don't give this a go now we'll never know whether it could have worked or not mm. and whether it made an improvement three years on they're glad max had that operation he's using his arms more max seems to have oodles of confidence but his parents know there are times he finds it tough yeah he really wants to keep up with the kids and his brother and sister and he does turn a lot of things into a competition he likes to set up competitions himself that he knows he's going to um do well at. Oh, here she comes. He'll start a race, he'll say, right, I'll see you in Oscar, we're going to do something, and he'll tell them at the very last minute, once he's in position, we have a race. He knows his limits, and he's starting to um, come around to knowing that he's not going to be able to keep up in some areas. It's still really hard for him, like he's, he's sort of a little bit in denial at the moment. Ivan's lived with arthrogryposis for 17 years. When most mums are banned from their teenage son's bedrooms, he accepts that he needs help getting ready in the morning. So just while you're getting your t-shirt on, tell me about like his shoulders there. What's... Um, well, they're internally rotated yeah, yeah. Um, and they have no muscle in them. Yeah. So basically all movement from my arms comes from my back, not so if, from my shoulders. So if you want to raise them up? Yeah, I have to use my whole back to and you can't lever up, no. up there. So with your right arm you can bend it I can. I can bend it, but I can't keep it there. I can't keep it up like so, so without having something to keep it. Passively moves up. Yeah. yeah. But does that help? Does that? It definitely hand? helps. It helps with a lot of things. Uh, but it's only in one arm. My left arm, I can't straighten it or bend it. Right, well, I'll let you get dressed. <laughs> yes. I don't normally have to explain it. 
you know, um, a lot of people just see it. They say, you've got a disability, yes. I, yes, I say yes. yes, I have arthrogryposis. And then, you know, the length of the word sort of just dazzles them and they just don't really ask about it. Yeah, they just think probably quite complicated words, so probably quite a complicated answer. <laughs> when I was born in uh, 1993 in Fukuda, Russia, I was taken away from my parents um, due to me having a disability and put in an orphanage. Um, I was there and I was loved by the ladies that worked with the orphanage. They just loved me to bits. And then a lady from New Zealand just came over and adopted me and another Russian boy. And um, we came over here and we were put into a family. And then it was, it was tough for a while because the, the adopted the adoptees um, had changed their minds about it. Friends of ours adopted him out of Russia and then did a panic moment. So he came to live with us temporarily while they sorted themselves out or a permanent home was found. And, um, and Ivan found his permanent home with us. So we fell in love within a few weeks and went through just monstrous heartache because we were really had decided we were child free. And, and so it was a massive decision at that stage. Doug and I had had 20 nearly 21 years on our own, so this little guy arrived and captured our hearts big time. And we're lucky he's quite comfortable with about who he is. We had one drive into town to school this year that was really difficult for both of us and heartbreaking. Um, and it was just simply because he just wanted hands that worked. And um, I have to say, I dropped him off at school thinking, how on earth is he going to cope with his day after this, you know, trip into the car, into school in the car? And, um, and I sat at, at the curb and cried for a while and got myself together and drove home and sort of collapsed into Doug's arms. And I picked him up. I just love this kid because I picked him up that afternoon and had this buoyant, happy child back again. And it was like, oh, my goodness. Sometimes your parents might say to you, you know, go off and do that. Um, it'll be good for you. And you say, no, I won't. It was in sixth form at school and we were all learning to do ballroom dancing. I said to Mum I'm, and Dad, I'm going to be left as a wallflower. I do not want to go. I was really adamant and they kept saying, no, you've got to go, you've got to go. It's good for you, it's good for you. And I went and it really showed me that sometimes you come out of things um, and you gain from it. It's reassuring being with others who live with the same disability, but there aren't many people in New Zealand with this condition. And National Arthrogryposis Group has a membership of just 40. Even their parents feel isolated. There's probably only a handful of kids and adults with it in New Zealand, and it did feel quite isolating until we met up with the Arthrogryposis Group, which was just amazing to meet with other parents. For me, it was just amazing to meet with people like Jean and all the other the mums and dads. And for Max, it's just been something he really looks forward to. Jean's just a phone call away and an email away, and um, she's kind of like our, our mother figure. <laughs> she Because she's so amazing with, the, with Ivan, and she's sort of paved the way for us. I wish that in a way that there was another mum that I could relate to um, who's who's been on the journey I've been on and um, but in fact you know although Rebecca says that the journey she's on is actually different to mine there's just an empathy there and you can say things and um, in, in, in some ways I suppose almost be crass about it and you know there's a level of understanding. What do you want to be when you grow up Max? I don't know. You don't? I'm probably gonna be a Soccer player? Soccer player. Yeah, I want to be a soccer player. That's cool. Ivan has experienced similar struggles to Max. He knows just hanging out with him helps. And you like the New Zealand, uh, oh, the Auckland Museum, eh? Yep. What's your favourite part about it? Um, probably about where all those live creatures are. Oh, cool. Well, when I was younger, probably five, six, it was the, definitely the, the angry stage where just anyone that stared at me, I, I just couldn't stand it. Just, you know, like, just made me feel horrible. And then the hiding away stage probably came around 10, where you just sort of wanted to hang out around home and just sort of be with people you know and just people that accept you and just don't, don't stare. And then I would have to say that, you know, I've only 
come to grips with it in the last couple of years, I'd have to say. I can remember coming home from school one day and this girl went past me. She was a nasty little girl. And she grabbed my bike handlebars and twisted it in. So I kind of nearly went off off the road and I went home to Mum and I cried and I said, why, why do people tease me, Mum? There are some places where he just doesn't get invited, whereas if he was able-bodied, he would. Um, there, are, there are friends who um, play at homes that he very rarely goes into. Um, and it's partly because Ivan's more comfortable in his own environment, but partially also because um, there are adults, although the, the, the kids are OK with him, the adults aren't. So it's isolating from that point of view. It's interesting, a, a cousin said to me a few years ago, this is a distant cousin, and, he, um, and I really thank him for what he said now, but I didn't at the time. And what he said to me was, Jean, um, we're really proud of our kids when they're good to kids like Ivan, but none of us want the Ivans of the world to be our, our kids' best friends. And I was pretty stunned at the time, but I, I'm really appreciative now of his honesty because I think that, for a big part of the population, that's true. Dan, you're looking shocked. Yeah, as a, as a <laughs> because... parent, how does that make you feel, though? I mean... Um, at the time, I was... Um, kind of left like a fish with my, my mouth waving in a way. I didn't have a response to it at the time. Um, and it hurt. Yeah, that was, the, that was the first thing. I can remember when I wasn't invited to a party that all the rest of the kids went to. And, and uh, why, Mum? Why? Mm. Why am I different? Why, why can't I be like all my friends? Well, when we first had Lily, she was in a push chair, so she just looked like a normal child when she's in a push chair with her clothes on. You can't tell that she's not able to walk. And it wasn't until she went into a wheelchair and we actually went out in the wheelchair and suddenly people stopped talking to her. When the push chair, they'd come up and they'd say, oh, what a cute little baby, and talk to her and everything was really good. And you put her in a wheelchair and suddenly no one wants to know her. And the kids who are coming up to talk to her, the parents are saying, come away and leave her. And it's really sad because all Lily wants to do is talk to them. So. Um, yeah, unfortunately the wheelchair's kind of defined who she is and you get the odd child who'll come up and the mother will go to pull them away and I'll go, no, no, they're fine, let her talk. And they'll come up and they'll talk to Lily and they'll say to me, why has she got wheels? And, you know, it's really good because you can explain it to them and, and they kind of get it. I bluster through life just expecting, ex expecting Ivan to be welcomed and included and so on and it just gave me more clarity of that's not always possible. I try to do everything else all the other kids did, but yeah, once once you realise you can't, that's definitely the hardest part, is just knowing you can't do some things. You'll watch a program on TV where the kids are jumping up and down and they're dancing and you can see her, she just focuses on it really, really strong and she just watches and watches. And the kids will be jumping and then she'll look down at her legs and she'll look at the TV and she'll look back at her legs and look at the TV and she'll pick up her legs and she'll start picking them up and dropping them on the floor like she wants them to dance. And you kind of just watch her and go, you, you, your heart kind of breaks when you see that. But you know that she's thinking it through, you know. That's how i got to make my legs work. So, yeah, it's, um, yeah, sometimes I think she is. And I knew that I'd have to get past that to be able to l l basically live, you know, because you can't just hide away from everyone forever. I think just to get, th to get through it, you just got to push through and just, you'll make it, you know you'll make it. I think this is the way. Max's arthrogryposis means his right knee is fixed straight. Today, he's having surgery to change that, and it means he might be able to ride a bike. He's been in the operating theatre a dozen times before, but it doesn't get easier. Usually, he's enthusiastic about his favourite insects, but today, he's distracted. He's nervous. He, he does get anxious, so we've just, we've, our thing is to not make it a big deal. We don't even really mention it um, until a couple of days before we go just so that he doesn't have to worry about it. So what are the surgeries you've had, and like, uh, and how old were you when you had them? Well, when I was two, I had my first surgeries, which were on my feet. I had them on both feet, and... So you can see the scars through there? Yeah, the scars wrapped right around my feet, and it was to flatten my feet. When I was born, I was born on my tippy toes, and they, 
I'm not totally clear on them, I'm not a surgeon of course, but they cut open my feet and flattened them and so I walk like anyone else now. It almost looks, they just about cut off the bottom of your foot and it goes all Pretty the way much. around. Yeah. It's every winter when I was a little kid from about the age of four and a half I used to have to have um, winter plasters, it was just part of my life. And they were to twist my feet round to correct them so that, because they were very twisted in, and this was to bring them out, and it had to be a gradual process. And right until I was about 12, that happened. It was just what you did in the winter time. And then when I was, I think I was just coming up five, I had my wrist done. Um, it was originally like my left hand as well. It was bent in, like so. But they cut it up, they got in there and took some bone out or moved some bone round and um, straightened it out. And so it, it just makes a marvellous improvement on things I can do. Um, she's had the one surgery on to try and correct the, the shape of her feet because they kind of face backwards. Um, and that was a partial success. They haven't completely straightened. So they, they reckon sometimes they have to do that surgery two or three times before it works fully. So that might be something they do further down the line. So why have they only done your right and not your left? Well, at the at the time they only thought to do the right and then it was probably a few years ago and they said you could have done the left, which we didn't know about, um, but the lady said, you know, he's used to what he does now, he's used to his routine, so I don't think there would be any point in doing his left. And now there's no option to go further with it? No, no. no so option. is that something you've missed out on? So, you could say missed out on, but I, I, I don't think so. I think I'm fine just, like, just, just with my right. Don't get it past me. <laughs> Mick's had quite a few surgeries since he was born. He had a couple when he was a baby, and probably every year or two years he has an orthopaedic sort of procedure done. So we've kind of worked our way from the top to the bottom, and this hopefully will be the last orthopaedic procedure. OK, so the plan of attack is for Max to have his left knee operated on. Um, so at the moment, yeah. <laughs> so at the moment, his left knee only bends to about 30 degrees. So when he was born, it was actually hyperextended, so it was kind of bowed that way. And and over time, it slowly got better. But yeah, it only bends to about 30 degrees, which can be a bit of a pain sometimes, eh, mate? Mm. Surgeons yeah. are removing excess cartilage in Max's knee. The ability to bend his leg will make running, crouching and sitting much easier. Okay. Can you say goodbye? Not to me, I'm coming. Say bye to the crew. See ya. Hi, it's me. Good, how are you? Oh, I just took Max in. Yep, he was really brave. Often parents feel quite anxious about where the kids are going to go to and what they will achieve. And to see and say to their parents, you know, these kids are going to reach their potential and, and uh, feel, feel excited about their future. When you're talking to somebody who is newly introduced to the world of arthrogryposis, um, I give them very little advice and say very little because you never know where they're coming from. You know, often it's really raw. Um, some people immediately love their babies no matter what and immediately kick into, um, into super protection and others are stunned by it and really don't know, know how to handle it. So you, you just ask the questions until you get a feel of where they're coming from. But one thing you can always say to them is you're on a roller coaster because it's a roller coaster. I think that when you've got a child with um, a disability that the lows are lower and the highs are higher. And the highs are just absolutely magical. So how are you feeling now, Max? Good. Well, the operation went really well. Mm -hmm. And as you know, you couldn't get the knee bent past about 30 degrees to start with. Yep. And on the operating table, we freed everything up as we said we were going to, and it could now bend to about 65 degrees. And we're hoping that once you get the knee moving, it's gonna bend even more, so. I'm quietly confident that it's going to make a big difference. Would, would people be able to sign it? The cast? Not really. Unless they had a felt pen, they could be able to sign it. Yeah. But it's not a full plaster cast, it's only a partial cast. You'll feel there's no plaster on the front, mm -hmm. and that's to allow for swelling and, and to make it more comfortable for you. At every age, living with an unusual condition means figuring your own way to achieve milestones. But Ivan will tell you, when you do have a victory, it's much sweeter. Yes, I've had my learners for about a year and a half now. We're uh, looking at getting me a modified car. Um, 
it's it's a, it's a slow process, but we'll get there in the end. And once we've got a modified car, I'll get my restricted, and then learn, and then final, and I'll be then I'll be away. Oh, that's a real liberating feeling of being like there with everyone else. Um, I got my license when I was about 16. I'll be able to drive to friends' places. I'll just be able to drive everywhere. I'll just it'll give me just a whole lot more options. You can get knocked right back, but it's actually character building. And you realise that the things that have knocked you back actually make you a lot stronger and more determined, and you do well out of it. <laughs> and in that, that path of dealing with all of those negative issues, you, you actually develop strategies for life, and I'm sure that's how I've managed to go out there and achieve reasonably well, because I didn't have an easy path as I was growing up. The biggest improvements to the lives of Wendy, Ivan, Max and Lily will be a shift in society's attitudes. As we often say, it's not the person who is disabled, but the world around them that puts up barriers. Our hope? That Lily, Max and Ivan will benefit in their lifetime.